Hello guys and welcome back to another video. This one was this video is supposed to be formatted way differently. Um, but I have all the rounds uh, and stuff and yeah, I scouted three prospects and out of the three I'm gonna pick um, the one that I think the Colts should draft. And the three that I picked are my top three out of all the prospects that we could get with our pick. So, yeah, let's get into this. So, in the first round, the top three were Sam Cosme, an offensive tackle, uh, Tevon Jenkins, an offensive tackle, and J.C. Horn, a cornerback. I would take Tevon Jenkins. He's gritty, he's versatile, he can play guard, um, he has good hand and footwork, he fits our run block scheme. Uh, the cons, he doesn't quite have the size that some other guys have. Um, and he could draw a lot of personal fouls as he plays with a lot of intensity. And honestly, I'd be scared of him if I had to line up as a defensive lineman against him. Because he's a beast. He, he's a beast. After him, I would take J.C. Horn. Um, he has decent size. He can blitz. He has good field vision. He has good athleticism. Sometimes he can be too aggressive. Sometimes he's not the best on the goal line. But... I think he's better than Sam Cosme. Uh, Sam Cosme, who I take third, isn't bad, but he's just the worst out of these three. Um, he has good field vision, and he has good fo footwork, but he's a possible holding risk with some of his hand placement, and he relies too much on his size. Even when you are 6'6", six 314", if you rely on your size and not your talent or like how good you are, you will get wrecked in the NFL. Scouts have known this for years. You can't just rely on your size. It, it doesn't work no matter how big you are. You won't be, you know, an all pro or a pro bowl. You won't be a top, a top player in the league if you just rely on your size. Like, especially at a position like offensive lineman, where you have guys, you know, like, just as big as you coming at you. So you, so you can't really rely on your size. On, the, on to the second round. Uh, the three that we have is uh, Nazma, Nasril Dean, he's a safety. Asante Samuel Jr., a cornerback. And Alex Leatherwood, an offensive tackle. First, I'd like Asante Samuel Jr. Um, he doesn't have the best size. He's only 5'10", 184 pounds. But he's a hard hitter. He has good field vision. Um, he isn't the fastest. And he does have some penalty concerns. But... He's good. <laughs> if, if you watch him play... You'll see, he, he, he's good. He's really good. Um, I'd, I'd draft him for corner depth. Next, um, I would take Alex Leatherwood, who's an offensive tackle. Um, he's big, but he doesn't rely on his size. I'm just saying that's a plus. Uh, he, he's more of a pass blocker, and he went to Alabama. Like, it's hard to pass up on an Alabama guy, especially an offensive lineman. Like, really, Alabama produces good, really good guys, except for a quarterback. Um, some cons, he doesn't have a ton of explosion. Um, and he, he doesn't have much athleticism. But he's got the field vision. His blocking is good, it just doesn't have that pop. So if we didn't draft an offensive tackle in the first round, I'd take him. But if we did, and I had to choose a second choice, it'd be Nazma, uh, Nasril Dean. He's a he, he's a hard hitter and he's athletic. He has possible injury problems, but 
not too concerned about that when we saw how Julian Blackman performed. He has selective field vision sometimes and he's inconsistent. This can all be solved though. So if we don't bring back Hooker, I'd take him. So we'd go Asante Samuel Jr. and then Alex Leatherwood and then Nazma Nazareel Dean. But it really relies on who we draft in the first round. So we'll just have to see. On to the fourth round because we don't have a third round pick. In the fourth round, we have Tony Fields, the second, a linebacker, Ronnie Perkins, an edge rusher, and Adekumbo, Adekumbo Agunji, an edge rusher. First, I... Hmm. I would go with the first one, Ronnie Perkins. He has, he has good decision making. He's strong. He has a lot of potential for being good in short range coverage. Uh, cons, he does have trouble with momentum, just kind of switching it and shifting it around. He'll probably struggle for a year or two with the NFL offensive linemen. But then after he develops, like after a year or two, he will develop into a very good football player. So he's more of a long-term project. But those guys who are long-term projects sometimes become the best players because they just learn to work through adversity. So injuries don't even phase them because they just see it as another obstacle they have to work around. And they work around it and they come back better than ever. They become very determined. Football players are already determined, especially good ones. And he's a good one. So it would just add to his mentality. He, he's just really good. Uh, second, I'd take... I'm just... Second, I'd take Agunji, the edge rusher. Pros, he has good size. He's a hard hitter. He can force his way through an offensive line. Cons, if he relies on his size too much, it's over for him. He, he is 6'4", 268. Ronnie Perkins was 6'3", 253. Um, but if... If he did fall to us in the draft, because Agunji is projected to go higher, if he did fall to us in the draft, I'd take him. But he's probably going to get drafted before. And then finally, I would choose Tony Fields the second. Um, because pros, he doesn't give on-ball plays. He could switch to cornerback or safety because he is smaller. He's 6 feet tall, 222 pounds. Um, and he, he has high football IQ and can shed blocks very well for a guy who's 6 feet tall. Cons? His size could get pancaked a lot, uh, and he's inconsistent. But because of his size, he could fall to us in the next round. So if he fell to us in the fifth round, I'd take him. I'd take a chance on him on that one. Um, another thing with like athletes that you'll see, if you tell them they're too small, usually more than more than not, they will just work through it. And they'll become good in spite of that. I do want to keep, even if the Colts don't draft him, I do want to keep uh, like following him throughout his career because he seems really promising. And I want to see how his size plays out in the NFL. So, on to the fifth round. In the fifth round, we have Trill Williams. He's a cornerback. She Smith, or Shu. No, it's S H I. So she, she Smith, a wide receiver, and Victor Dimakuji, an edge rusher. Um, first I'd take, cause I don't like him at receiver. Yeah, first I'd take She Smith, cause we should at least take a receiver in this round. In the next two coming up, I'm not as big on as She Smith. So I would definitely take him. Pros, he's consistent. He'll go for multiple passes. It could result in tipped interceptions. But from what I saw, usually it didn't. Usually it resulted in him making a crazy catch. Um, uh, he, and he has improving route running throughout his career. Every single year, if you look at his tapes... 
from the be the beginning of his career to the end of his career, his in in college, his route running abilities become better each and every single year. Um, his his cons, he is injury prone, but again, with Chris Ballard, if he drafts an injury prone player, usually usually they become very good. <clears throat> Julia Blackman, um, his football IQ is questionable. But as, like, with the route running becoming better, his IQ will probably become better. Because as you learn stuff like route running, your IQ for football becomes higher. So it will probably improve in the years to come. I know that's how I am. Like, uh, just take in information. Keep it. Memorize it. Try and use it. If he does it like that, and he takes in all the information that coaches give him, and veterans give him, like T.Y. Hilton. He will be a really good receiver, and that football IQ won't be a worry anymore. Overall, I would take him with with the first with the first with the pick that we have in the fifth round. I take him. Simple. Um, next, if we didn't take an edge rusher in the first in not the first round, but if we didn't take an edge rusher to this point, I would pick Dimakuji. He is a smaller edge rusher at 6'1", 262, but he, is good, he has a good speed and power combo. Because, you know, what comes with being smaller is usually you're faster. And he definitely has that speed. And he has similar power to some of the bigger guys. So he has really good speed and power combo. He has good pursuit. Like, once he sees anything holding a ball, he just runs at it. It attacks. And he's durable. Cons... He has speed, but he does have trouble accelerating. So just like getting off, getting off the line and having that explosion, you won't really see that from him sometimes. Um, and he needs more moves. He needs more power moves to try and get around an offensive lineman because he cannot rely on just his power alone. He needs to have some moves. And if you watch his tape, he doesn't really have that many. So, he just needs to either improve on the few that he has, or have more. He just needs moves. Or better moves. So, yeah, I take him a second. And this is another one where the my some of my picks, it relies on who we draft. If we didn't draft a cornerback yet, then yeah, I'd take Trill Williams. He's six feet tall, 280 pounds, 208 pounds, not 280, jeez. Um, he's a good tackler, he's a good hitter, he's good in short-range coverage, he's an ideal nickel corner, kind of a Kenny Moore type build. Um, cons, he's bad in deep coverage, which is less like Kenny Moore. Um, overall, I would like the depth he would bring. So, but yeah, first I'd take She Smith. Now, on to the sixth round. Um, in the sixth round, we have Rico Bussey, wide receiver, Quentin Morris, a tight end, and Bryce Hargrove, a guard. First, I take Quentin Morris. He's 6'2", 252 pounds. He has good size for a tight end. Pros, he has good hands. He's a former basketball player, which means he has hops, just like a certain Mo Ali Cox we all know and love. Um, he's, a, he's also a decent blocker. And he has perfected, if you watch some of his catches, he has perfected the toe tap. So this will save us multiple plays, especially if we have like, the tight end running an out route. And it's a bit overthrown, and it goes farther than intended. He has the toe tap, and he'll keep it in bounds, and we'll you know, get a first down out of it or something. We'll get, we'll get a gain out of it. Cons, he doesn't have much speed. And when he weighed in at heavier weights, when he was heavier, he played better. So he m should probably put on some weight, but not too much because it, it's, a, it's a balance. He already doesn't have a ton of speed. So he doesn't want to t put on too me much to reduce the amount of speed that he has. So he needs to put it on in muscle, which is difficult. It is really difficult. It, it all depends on just how he develops. But I would definitely take him. He's a really good tight end. Next, I take Bryce Hargrove. He's a guard. 
six foot four to uh, 310 pounds pros is quick hands he has a wide stance he has good impact blocking and he has good vision cons he's a penalty concerned and in power versus power like him versus someone similar to him he's gonna lose that's that's the big concern he needs to get used to guys being really good and he needs to try and match them which he has trouble with. But I definitely take him. And then third, Rico Bussy, the wide receiver. Bussy, whatever. He has good speed, and he's a good possession wide receiver. Cons, his hands are inconsistent, and he has tracking problems. So yeah, Quentin Morris for this round. But like I said, you know, if they take my third pick in this, I'm not going to be mad. Because that's still, like, the third guy that I would take. On to my favorite... Actually, this is my favorite out of all these guys. Just watch this guy's highlights. He is insane. Let's get on to the seventh round. This dude's insane. In the seventh round, the guy that I would take first, and the guy that is projected to go to us on multiple mock drafts, Grant Stewart. He's a linebacker. He is small. He's even smaller than Tony Fields II. He's 5'11", 5'11", 230 pounds. But there are a lot of pros here that I, I just need to point out. He is a vicious tackler. He sees anything carrying a ball. It is dead. He's going after it. He's a hard hitter. He hits with just so much pow. As soon as he hits that guy, he at least brings him to a stop and then drags him down. Um, he has tons of energy. Darius Leonard type energy, you know, doing jumping jacks before the play starts. He has tons of energy. He has decent coverage, and he's a fundamentally sound tack tackler. This dude has such a good wrap-up. And when you have fundamentals down, no matter what your size, you can tackle people. When you are fundamentally sound, and you get the wrap-up, you get your feet set, you get your shoulder in, you tackle anybody. And this guy has such a fundamentally sound tackle that I think he could bring down bigger guys. Plain and simple. He could bring down Derrick Henry. I'm telling you right now, he could bring down Derrick Henry. Just go watch this dude's highlights. He can bring down Derrick Henry. Cons, he is undersized. He could draw lots of penalties with how, just like Tevon Jenkins. He could freaking draw so many penalties um, and he doesn't have a, a lot of play recognition, so he's a bit slower off of the snap and recognizing who's who's doing what. Um, and he has trouble shedding blocks. So as soon as that first blocker gets to him, it's hard for him to shed that first blocker and get to the get to the guy carrying the ball. But this man is just such a hard hitter. He he is so vicious. He he and Tevon Jenkins are probably the most angriest players in the draft. These guys are so angry. Like, they are mad that you stepped on the field today, that you decided to put on that jersey today. They are just mad about that, and they want to freaking kill you. And it is fun to watch. Jeez. I would definitely take this dude. Next... I'd take, I'd take Marquise Stevenson. He's a wide receiver. Pros, he has a lot of potential. He has a good amount of speed. He's good off the line, and he has good hands. Cons, he's injury prone. He has, troubles with, he has trouble with routes, and he's inconsistent, just like a lot of these wide receivers in the later rounds. But if Stewart got picked up by a, another team early in the draft, and they're getting a freaking gem, then I'd take him. This last guy, it is only if he would have to fall like 10 draft picks to get to us, but he played at Purdue, so I know a decent amount about I know a decent uh, amount about his game. That is Derek Barnes. He's a linebacker. He's six feet tall, 238 pounds. Pros, he's versatile. I mean he can play multiple positions. He has lots of power. He has good fundamentals and he's durable. He he was he was a workhorse at Purdue and he was really consistent sometimes. Cons, he has trouble shedding blockers, 
and remember when I said consistent at times? Well, really, that's just a nicer way of saying he was inconsistent. Sometimes you'd see him make a huge play and he'd look really good. Other times he would completely miss. And sometimes his temper would get the best of him. It wasn't good all the time. But if he falls to us and Grant Stewart's taken... Derek Barnes, welcome to the freaking Indianapolis Colts. But yeah. Let's go to the summary. So overall, in... Come on now. In the first round, I'd take Tevon Jenkins. In the second round, I'd take Alex... No, I'd take Asante Samuel Jr. In the fourth round, I'd take Agunji. In the fifth round... I'd take She Smith. In the sixth round, I'd take Quentin Morris. And in the seventh round, I would take Grant Stewart. That's my summary. There's my mock draft for this year. We'll see how it goes. The two guys that I like the most, Tevon Jenkins and Grant Stewart. Those are the guys that I really want to go to this team. There, that's my... Those are my top two. Tevon, guy in the first round, and the guy in the seventh round. But if we've learned anything from Chris Ballard, he's going to make the right decision. I probably, even if he picks somebody that's not on that list, I'm probably going to agree with it. Because he knows what he's doing. I'll probably do some more research on the guy we pick and find out, oh, this guy's a hidden gem that I just didn't look at. But... Uh, Chris Ballard definitely knows what he's doing. And in that later round, I, ho I hope in the seventh, he knows what he's doing and takes Grant Stewart. That dude is a freaking beast. Such a beast, man. But yeah, I will see you guys next time. As always, I'm not funny. And I have a lot more energy now. It's nice. I'm working on, working on a project. It is about the Pacers playing a bit of Moneyball. Which they did a good job today. They took uh, O'Shea Brissett, signed into a three-year deal. I don't know how much money. I need to try and look. But if it's for, like, the minimum, jeez, that's great money ball. That's money ball right there, you know? Taking undervalued guys who, for whatever reason, O'Shea Brissett was overlooked. But taking those guys and massively underpaying them because nobody else knows what they're worth. And we did that with O'Shea Brissett today. We gave him a three-year deal. If it's worth like four or five million dollars over three years, holy crap, we got a steal. So, I'll see you guys next time. As always, I'm not funny. Let's... Grant Stewart is the best player in the draft. I love on the show, as in like, you know, tell each other they love. I